I'm your host Jason Park and today we get to take a look at the 4th gen Mitsubishi Eclipse. What was once known as an iconic sports car, now a forgotten JDM. Lion Godzilla, let's go. He goes. To get in my ride for a limited time, then look in my eyes, they don't go. Bugatti, Bugatti, Bugatti. All of my shooters got two bodies, and they on the hunt for a new body. But I never pay for the pool naughty. Right up the fuck you gonna do body. Promise you. Man, who the hell we going to rob? Make it up. Right now, we have your beautiful Eclipse behind us. Tell the people out there, where can they find you? Well, you're gonna know already by now, I am ACG Afro Car Guy, so y'all can find me yeah. on my channel, Afro Car Guy. <laughs> right, right, right here, right on the bottom, right on the bottom. Okay, so what made you buy and what made you build this gen Eclipse compared to any other Eclipse or any other car out there? What made you gravitate towards the last of a dying breed? It was more so something that happened by complete accident, if that makes sense. So when I originally set out for my car to be a part of the car scene, I wanted a Mustang. Didn't matter what year, I just wanted some type of Mustang. And upon searching for Mustangs, of course, my mom was always like, that's not a very safe car. That's <laughs> yeah. not a car I think you should have right now. Okay, cool, whatever, mom. So one day I'm driving past a Nissan dealership as we're looking for cars, and I saw the Eclipse way in the back under like uh, a little kiosk looking area and i was like yo what, what's up with the eclipse the dude shoots us the price and i'm like this is actually pretty unique i like this yeah one thing led to another i got deep into the car scene and quickly realized that no one even cared about this generation eclipse and as i continued to dig deeper i found out oh but there is a small cult of people who do do things to these cars yep. so all hope is now lost as y'all can probably see well yeah so the, the crazy thing is like take away fast and the Furious with the iconic green eclipse right the paul walker eclipse you take that out of the equation yeah. and you just look at the models right first gen second gen third gen fourth gen this is probably one of the best looking eclipses out of all the generations yeah i i can hands down definitely say that it's just sad that mitsubishi couldn't follow through on the performance to have matched those looks that they gave us. You know, these models didn't come all wheel drive. They didn't come boosted. Uh, they did come with a decent amount of power if you opted for the V6 platform, but for yep. the most part, on paper, it just wasn't an enticing car. But that's, it's aged well it, though. Yeah. It's aged, like this is a 2011. Like if you guys have never seen, which I know a lot of you have, but if you haven't seen the last gen Eclipse in person, uh, and you look at it from a picture online or a video online, it's actually a lot smaller in person. It's yeah. more like it's more like size to an exotic car. And then the, yes. the lines have actually aged really well, yeah. right? Because there's yeah. nothing sharp about it. It's round, almost like that 90s style architecture. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what have you done to the car? Like aftermarket wise, what, what have you done? So as y'all can probably tell, the biggest giveaway is the car is rocking a 350Z Rocket Bunny kit um, that's been retrofitted. Literally, it's this kit came and it was meant for a 350Z, but after I purchased it, um, I dropped it off to a shop and it was able to refabricate it to fit the body lines of the Eclipse. And it's also rocking a 350Z chassis mount wings. And again, when it came in, that could have fit a 350Z, but we retrofitted it to fit the chassis of the 4th Gen Eclipse. Um, 
as far as me wanting to go with the 350Z Rocket Bunny kit, was out of pure, I wouldn't say, pure, I guess you could say pure luck. I, I found some guy on Instagram who used to do these kits a lot just for, uh, just just because he could. And after seeing him create it, I'm like, yo, he has something there. He has something. I like the way that looks. And I always loved the gill section of the 350Z kit, but I never had a 350Z. Yeah. So seeing him put this kit on the Eclipse, I'm like, oh crap, I can do this. Yep, yeah, it works. So. The kit took about two to three months to refabricate because obviously this kit is not meant for this car, but we had to put it on in such a way to where it looks like it is for this car and still fit properly in functionality wise. Like if you probably can tell the front fenders are cut literally in a tolerance that's so close to the door that the stock kit itself <laughs> wouldn't have fit. The rear fenders, if you chop them in half going on back, that's 100% custom made. Everything else going forward could probably sit, still fit a 350Z, but everything going back is literally made to fit the curvature of the fourth generation body. Um, and as far as that, like any wide body kit, you need a suspension setup and you need wheels, guys. Don't ever think you can rock, a, rock uh, a wide body kit and not have those things in line with each other. So what kind of suspension did you get on it? So this is actually before, this is me thinking ahead, I got, um, airlift management system and D2 air struts before I even got the wide body kit because I knew if I was going to go wide eventually I didn't want to just be static all the time. Mm -hmm. I, it was my daily driver. I was a college kid. So stacked up enough money, got my airlift management system first and then stacked up another set and got my D2 air struts. Still can't believe I was able to pull something like that off. Still can't believe it now because anyone who knows anything about bags, they know them things gonna run your pockets. Every major <laughs> evolution of a car is gonna run anywhere between four to five thousand dollars. That's from <laughs> no kidding. A rat, a wide body, yeah. a wing, wheels. You can do the math right there. Yeah. So the airless management system and D two air struts. I didn't know. I was still kind of new to the scene, so I had no idea you could cross the cross compatible yeah. like that. But if you think about it, it's just air being shoved into a, a, a rubber boot. I've been running the, this kit for the past. Almost five years now since the ownership of the car, never had any issues, never let me abandon. Other than a, a minor like a remote issue where my remote sits in my car, it sits there so much that over those five years it yeah. ate into the actual wiring harness. But that just was just me ordering a new wire. So for the most part, I've never had any reliability issues out of the, the bags. So what what size what size wheel and fitment are these wheels? Because they they fit really nice. They look really good. So these wheels can probably fit on a 350Z as well. Um, <laughs> if y'all remember on uh, David's channel and my channel, I had an issue with GMR wheels. Um, when these wheels were first sent off, they were actually uh, bored out to the hub size of a 350Z, which is slightly smaller than the hub bore on my car. So after waiting almost really half a year, six to seven months to obtain the wheels, now keep in mind, the average three-piece wheel construction should take no more than 30 days, maybe two months? Yeah. Took them almost, took them half a year. So that was a very long endeavor to just still get the wrong wheel anyways. Yeah, um, yeah. So w what have you done engine-wise, and then what, what's your next steps in the evolution of the Eclipse? Uh, okay. So, well, to wrap up the wheel part, um, the specs, 19 by 12 in the back, and oh, 19 thick. by 10. Yeah, yeah she's she thick. She's she thick. Oh my God. <laughs> and the uh, offset, I don't remember exactly, but it's a negative 70 ish offset in the rear, and like a negative 20 or 30 ish in front. I do plan to rebuild them to get a wider setup and to lower the offset rating because I realize a negative 70 is pretty yeah. intense yeah. for what it is. But the car handles fine. I've tracked it with the current setup and everything. No issues there. So um, reliability's I, been good. Oh man, what? I can still date <laughs> this thing if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I just choose not to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. What are, what are your plans next uh, uh, for the car? Like, wh what's the end goal of what you're going to do to it? Ooh, I, I love those questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. Those <laughs> so what's on the horizon right now is my self-made turbo kit. Um, I say self-made because everything for this car is pretty much custom made. There's nothing for this car that you can just buy out of a out of a store out of a website so um the self-made turbo kit is about 95 percent complete and i say 95 percent complete because at this point it's just a matter of me getting in the shop and learning what other tiny things we may need to complete the kit itself but mm -hmm. the bulk of the kit is here and it's ready to get put in and hopefully after the kit's installed and everything's plumbed up and uh, plugged up properly 
we should be looking at somewhere, fingers crossed, around 300 wheel horsepower. Okay. And keep in mind, it started at 120 wheel horsepower. Yep. So y'all can see the starting line figure. Um, and can the stock motor handle that adequately? Or the stock gonna... motor is actually rated supposedly up to 400 horsepower before okay. it starts giving issues. The only weak point itself is the transmission, and my automatic transmission, which is rated about 300 horsepower. Okay, okay. So I know most people don't really do this when they get turbo setups, um, but I do, I will be running a trans temp gauge because from my understanding, as long as you keep your trans temps in a reasonable range, you can continue to run extra power. But the moment the trans temp begins to exceed certain limits, that's when the overheating issues and other type of reliability issues yeah, start yeah. coming in play. So that's another gauge I'll be running in the car. Um, following me, beyond that, once it's boosted and once we got everything settled, it's still a lot more coming, but right behind, like right behind that, we're looking at a Paul Walker livery. If y'all okay. remember Paul Walker's second gen Eclipse. Yeah, explain to them exactly what a Paul Walker <laughs> delivery is. This, for all the Fast and the Fierce people out there, for the Paul Walker fans out there, for the OG you guys Eclipse, gonna you're gonna love this. Explain to them what this is. So the Paul Walker livery is pretty much gonna be how much the Paul Walker second gen Eclipse in the Fast and Furious franchise. If y'all remember his second gen Eclipse that was blown up in uh, the movie, uh, Rock the Green <laughs> By the Asians. <laughs> By the Asians. <laughs> Um, it, it rocked out. Uh, I, I don't know exactly because I've never seen one in person, but we all know what the car looks like. Some of y'all probably seen it in person, but I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say it's like a a dark lime green yep. base color with a. And I don't even think anyone really knows what it is, but it's almost like a. <laughs> it's, like a blue, yeah. it's like a blue missile, but it's a blue running striker along the side and a lot of the company names along the bottom. Um, I'm gonna send um, Jason a picture so he can drop it for y'all yep, yep. to get the idea, but. That's the it's image clean. I'm going It's for. clean, yeah, oh, I like it. God. I think it's a great modern iteration, a modern take on an old classic. You know, Throttle did it, but not knocking anything they did. It was on the second gen Eclipse, and for the most part, it looked exactly like the previous iteration of Paul Walker Eclipse. This take on it, I think like it's gonna be a total modern iteration. We have three piece wheels, it's wide bodied, it's gonna have a turbo, and for those who may be knocking, oh, well, it's still automatic, or oh, it's still front wheel drive, shot, we're not done there. That is said we're gonna stop it. <laughs> we are looking at 400 wheel horsepower, all wheel drive, 400 all wheel horsepower. The end goal, people, is to get this all wheel drive. All that, wheel that's drive. the end goal, right? To literally make it the, the fourth gen GSX Eclipse. What Mitsubishi should have delivered from factory? Yeah, you know what? If they would have delivered, because oh, Mitsubishi goodness. knew this was their last gen. Yes. I don't understand why they didn't deliver a GST, a GSX version of like, all right, this is the limited one. We're going to do a production of like, you know, 2000 or whatever. And it was, because wasn't there one years ago of this gen uh, Eclipse that was all wheel drive? Like years ago. Yes. I think it was like red and black maybe, or no, or yellow. Years ago, there, yeah. there was one. We are talking about the, uh, the second gen GSX. No, no, believe, no, no, no. About this, this this one. Gen. Oh, this no, this gen never came as all with no, 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 not from the not from the uh, not from uh, the factory. But there was a group of people, if I can mm. remember, a group of people came out with an with a uh, all wheel drive version. And I think they matted. If I'm not mistaken, I'm probably am, but they matted a GSX all wheel drive system really? to the, uh, the to this gen. Really? Or they Frankenstein something? This was like I read about it years ago. It must have been like some type of uh this if it was years ago it probably wasn't during the time of the influencers and stuff like that no, so this no it was before then before TikTok. so this is like people just had money in the garage were doing something so i don't know that but there are two people that i do know one personally um who have recreated the all-wheel drive conversion for this generation Eclipse. Uh, one dude's in Russia or Germany. I think it's Germany. It's actually. always in Russia or Germany, right? <laughs> no way of contacting that guy, but he has done it. Um, but he's actually fell off the map. But it's another guy who's local. I say local, considering every well-built Eclipse is at least a state from each other. Um, he's in Florida. He has... Florida, Florida always has the skylines, the super. They have everything. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my dude. Why can't you be in Atlanta, man? Yeah. So he has... A fourth generation Eclipse, but his is the V6 model, and it's uh, it's all-wheel drive, but he takes his a step further, and I had to do a review on him. His is 675 all-wheel horsepower, Jeez. twin charge, Jeez. nitrous. <laughs> it's 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 a beast. It's yeah. a total beast. But he was able to convert the platform, and he's actually sent me the build sheet. 
I think he thinks I wasn't gonna be able to do it, but little does he know, oh yeah, yeah I am. Yeah. That's yeah. why I, that's why I'm setting out to uh finish the turbo setup and wait, stuff. Okay, wait, hold on. How, yeah. how it how, okay, what goes into like briefly mm. into con converting mm. it like to the all wheel drive? Like what what platform are you getting it from? Like mm. what how, how, what's going into that? So a lot of y'all could probably guess or probably not guess. A lot of it is Evo related. Um, but that doesn't mean it has to be Evo related. Uh, from his build sheet, a lot of it looked like it was directly pulled from Evo um, parts and things like that. A lot of custom made stuff here and there, but for the most part, I think if I can purchase a wrecked Evo, and then I, I backtrack, I don't think it has to be a wrecked Evo. I think as long as I can find an all wheel drive car that is decently modifiable in the aftermarket sense, I think I can use that as a donor car and start sharing parts to this car to get the ball rolling. And even then, it doesn't matter because the dude is local in Florida, so I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind if he sees us getting the ball rolling to start shooting us ideas and different yeah. links yeah. to get the um, conversion completed. Because um, even though he's pushing 600 horsepower, I think 400 will be more than suffice yeah. to the wheel from this car. Because um, it's still a light chassis, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not? So the, the, okay, so I, I was ignorant to this. Yes. The Eclipse chassis, this Eclipse chassis is not light? Dude. Where's Nits all the weight going? Nits and VC. Screw this. Let's okay. just say that. They okay. said, we're going to make it look nice, and that's it. From my understanding, and I don't have total confirmation on this, but this car weighs 37, just... 37. 38. About, about 36, 35. Okay. Maybe 33. It's like literally probably 100 pounds heavier or 100 pounds lighter than a V6 Mustang. Now, keep this in mind. Because the V6 Mustang is a much bigger car compared to this. Yes, but it, he it's weigh, small in person. This nope. is, this is small. They weigh nearly the same. They weigh <laughs> nearly the same, which is why a V6 Mustang would run laps around this car. But it should be different once the turbo gets in there, and that should pep it up. But from my understanding, I think this car is built on a truck chassis. Yeah. Okay. Or SUV chassis. I think okay. it's shared. It makes sense because all the Mitsubishis now are SUVs. It makes yes, perfect sense. Exactly. So I don't, and that probably explains why this car from factory sits almost as high as an SUV. I don't yeah. know if you're seeing like the stock ride height of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can stick Pretty your whole high. arm in the wheel gap of that car. So I want to say it's just the same chassis. Don't quote me. The same chassis either with a, you know, and I actually can't even think of what car it could be, but I want to say it was built on the SUV chassis, which is why the frame itself is literally just heavy. Yeah. But in regard to that, handling is up. If y'all may think uh, about the R35 GTR, for example, weighs a ton. It hauls, but you don't have to be going 180 miles an hour to feel the handling capabilities of the car because it weighs a ton, which means it's going to be glued to the road. Yeah. So same instance rolls over. Physics, duh, science, come on guys. Even though it's heavy, it's flat in all the corners. It's, 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 it's leveled wherever it goes. It feels planted. For the most part, I don't think as much I got to do suspension wise yeah. to really tie the, the grip and capabilities of the car together. So let me ask you this. How do people react to you when they see the Eclipse? <laughs> like what, what are people's reactions? Like when you pull up to a gas station or you go to oh, you know a car man, show, like, yeah, like- That's a good question. The gas station's funny. Um, it may not be a Lamborghini, but <laughs> don't expect to walk into a gas station and pop out, pop back in and go, no. You got to at least be prepared to spend at least five to 10 minutes conversating with somebody because it's, it's not a second that goes by when I'm pulling to a gas station just to get some gas or just to get something to drink and I'm not ready. Hey man, nice car. I'm almost over there. It's always yeah. something. There's always some type of event going on in this car. As far as car events go, it's hit or miss. It is really it? is a hit or miss. Um, Let me tell you guys, yeah. in, in person, a, a wide body uh, fourth gen Eclipse is, it, it fits and looks so good. Even if you're not a fan of like, let's say the bubble headlights, just the overall stance and, and, and shape of the car. It's almost like a sideways teardrop, right? Yeah. It, it looks, it looks good. Like, I, I don't know why there's not a bigger following with this Jenny clip. And, and even in today's market, because it's so undervalued, right? It, to me, it's the same thing as the Hyundai Genesis when I bought it, yeah. right? It's so undervalued that you can get these super affordable yeah. and get decent, adequate performance yeah. for the price. You can't, that is a very true statement. These cars, <clears throat> other than, okay, I wouldn't buy one from a dealership for the most part. I mean, you could, but it's a lot of wiggle room with that price. Um, yeah. As far as marketplace goes, like you said, I think this is a steal of a car because the amount of 
the 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 revamping as far as like me being the youtuber and all the other people who are working on these cars the amount of stuff you can do to these things with the amount of money put into it is like a no-brainer so aftermarket support is strong on this still with the cult following yes okay because you you it's it's not don't expect 350z or brz type of a following with this car but once you do get locked in, you're locked in. This one dude, I, I mention him all the time on my videos. Uh, Alex, I can't pronounce his last name, but Alex, he knows who he is. Manufactures all the turbo kits for this car. Okay. One dude, but you can never complain about, oh, there's no turbo kit for the Yeah, there is. You just gotta do your research. Oh, there's nothing I can do to modify this car as far as aesthetics. Yeah, there is. You just yeah. gotta do your research. Yeah. I think the issue with this car, as far as the scene goes, and it's nothing against anybody, I totally get it. Because had I known what I know now, I probably would have got a 350 ZRG35 for my first car. But I feel like a lot of people want the easy way out and they want that uh, that um, overnight success with their build. They don't want to go off the norm or go yeah. the different route of attaining something that people don't see every day. You yeah. know? Uh, again, I have nothing against these other platforms that are seen everywhere, but. It, it does burn my. Uh, it does burn me out when I go to certain meets and um, my car is sidelined to let in the BRZ that's running the same kit as another BRZ, probably two states over or yeah. the next BRZ two feet over. Yeah, it, it's it's mind boggling, but it's like, it's just you just gotta you just it's just something you just gotta expect. So what, what 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 advice would you give somebody like let's say someone out there is looking at it like yo I'm gonna pull the trigger on an Eclipse. <laughs> what advice would you give somebody that's looking to buy this Gen Eclipse? Go performance first. <laughs> so you would say go, go, the, go, go the, get the V6 over the four-cylinder? Um, no, actually the V6, even though it is more powerful, it is more troublesome to build power out of, considering it's literally shoved into the engine bay versus the four-cylinder. Like a 3000 GT. There's yes. No, there's no room. Yes, there's yeah. no room to do anything. Yeah. Like, it's, it's hectic in there. Don't get me wrong, the V6 is fine if that's what you get, um, but don't expect to throw a turbo in there anytime soon without an extensive amount of work. Yeah. It's much easier to modify these platforms, the GS, the GS Sports, uh, the four cylinders, as far as power goes. So I would say the first thing I would do is go power. Like I said, stack up that four or 5,000 need for the turbo kit and boost it. It's gonna save you a lot of the frustrations in the long runs when you feel how slow these cars actually are from the factory. Yeah. Now, a, a, a road tune, uh, shout out to my boy Morgan, can definitely pep it up but I feel like you're gonna feel a lot more engaged with your car knowing that it can now handle and perform as well as all the other cars you'll probably be rolling out with, 350Zs, G35s, uh, Genesis, those type of cars. Cause nine times 10, if you purchase an Eclipse, those, those are the cars you're gonna be around nine times yeah, out of 10. Yeah. Then that's a power, now that you got power out of the way. Now my issue is now, since I gotta do power, I gotta take these kits off, I gotta take that hood off. I gotta worry about damaging all the one of one pieces I've just worked so hard to create. If you go power first, you don't have to worry about that. The car is already probably going to be beat, so you can do everything you need to make the car operate properly. So now, time when it comes to make it pretty, it's a matter of you literally just wrapping up the bow on the, wrapping up the bow on the present at yeah, that point. Yeah, you, it just it'll just save you headache in the long run. Worry about performance first. Get your turbo kit, get your suspension setup done, offset your tires and wheels, or purchase three piece wheels ahead of time. So when you are ready to go a wide body, whatever the case may be. All you gotta do is just rebuild your wheels to fit that new yeah. that new uh, wheel gap. Um, and to be honest, like I said, I I would purchase one off a of marketplace in a heartbeat. Yeah. If I could do it again and want to set up for this build, you could buy this like three four thousand heartbeat. Go with somebody Easy. that knows something about cars, or if you do know something about cars, sniff it out. And that's that's a that's a you have a one of one build for no, no less than someone that took the build their entire show car that they're still making payments on probably. So yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Miles. Appreciate hey it, guys, man. let's check out a little POV action. All right guys, so right now we are in Miles last gen eclipse and i am about to take this bad boy for a spin i can tell you right away the cockpit is very simple i like simple i like simple a lot so you have your gauge cluster you have your is this an upgraded stereo this is that is um a double dim or however you pronounce it um what is it a jensen yeah but that's not stock no it's not okay stock, no. so you have your upgraded uh stereo you have your clock up top you have your ac down here and that's pretty much it 
Uh, visibility in here is really good. Now I will say visibility gets a little shallow right here in the rear kind of like quarter panels. Um, but outside of that, seating position is good. I like the steering wheel. Steering wheel is nice. I can definitely, with this setup, I can definitely feel the road. But I will say like even just the feel of it, this is a very big improvement over the previous gen Eclipse. Now I've owned the Too Fast, Too Furious model Eclipse. And the one thing that I hated about that particular car was the turning radius. The turning radius I thought was horrible. But in this, it feels like a 90s sports car, right? And when I say 90s sports car, I'm talking about like your Mazda MX-6s, your, your 240s, like it, it has that feeling. It's just the interior is a little more driver focused and it's a little more, it's wider. There's a lot more space. Now, the good thing about this interior is your leg room, there's a lot of it, right? Your, because, and I'm assuming because it's not rear wheel drive, you don't have this large big pillar here that your knee is constantly hitting on. Nah, you can, you can take this on a cruise for hours and probably feel really comfortable. I've driven this car several hours. Uh, I'm gonna say several. Don't, I think now about two, three hours. Yeah. It, it can still, like I say, it can still definitely be a dangerous driver. Yeah. If you push him, it's, uh, it's not an issue at all. No, absolutely not. And even like when you think of like the size of the vehicle, you have your moonroof here. Uh, I like this, like the simplicity of this. Even though when you think of like Teslas and everything is going towards being very simple, yeah, this has aged really well. Never thought about that aspect. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like it's becoming cool again in a very slow manner. Yeah. Whereas, like when you think of the '80s, there was a bunch of knobs, right, and they were kind of like doing stuff. Then in the '90s, it was like okay, it was kind of simple. Then in the 2000s, it's like all right, let's add a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then now we're going back to everything being very simple. Now the thing about simplicity is. Simplicity ages well because you don't have anything to outdate it. But outside of the ride, I mean, I would say like if you're young and you're looking for a sports car that's not too crazy, like if you're a parent and you're looking for something that's not overwhelming, but it's easy to get into, easy to modify, still looks good. I'm sorry about that. Did, I did not see that. Um, my tuna eyes were off. Um, <laughs> This is probably a really good platform for someone to get into. Hands down, hands down. Like we were saying before, like you can get these well under five thousand dollars and still have plenty of life left in them. And if you want to be super positive about it all, you can still get one for about eight to ten thousand at a dealership. And that's and that's probably super clean too, right? That's super clean, super clean. Now I still think, like I said, since I've owned the car, I think that's well over what the price should be for a vehicle like that. But then I think again, that's about the price I paid. I had this car for almost six years. Never You know this this car. has more room than my Hyundai Genesis coupe. <laughs> this has this is very spacious in the yes, front. Yes it is, it is. Wide turn, there we go. Yeah my entire ownership of the five three years of having I've never had any major issues with the car. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, I drive, I drive. Yeah, I drive. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And I mean, right now you have 154 on the dash. Mm -hmm. So to have no issues at 154,000 miles, that's pretty darn good. I mean, especially when you think of Mitsubishi's and all the issues they had with like the second gen Eclipse motors. Mm -hmm. Like for under 5K, right? If you think about what you're getting, like, yeah, you're not, you're not getting a 350Z. You're, you're not getting like a G35 or anything like that, but like for what you're getting to get into, if, if you're looking for a first car and you're looking for something that's affordable, uh, reliable, that's cool looking, that everyone doesn't have, that you can modify and still have, you know, uh, uh, safe power, right? We're gonna call it right. safe power. Usable power. Usable power. You can put your foot to the floor in this, but, and you don't have to worry about it trying to get away from it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you so even for the four banger, right? Yeah. Being that it's not like a newer four banger that has 200 plus horsepower. Yeah. Being that what it's pushing like 115, 120. Yeah, should be probably 140 with the road tune now. Okay. That's just speculation. We haven't put it on the dyno to confirm that, but 
Um, it's definitely much more responsive than what stock. So even like the auto transmission, the auto transmission in this car is not too bad. Like or four speed, I, I can't. Yeah, it's not speed. like it, it does what it's supposed to do. Like you got to remember, I, I think a lot of times people forget when they get certain cars, is you can't compare this to other cars. Like, yeah, like if yeah. you're getting a four banger Eclipse, know what it is. It's not a 350Z. It's not a. Um, it's not a you know a, a GTR or a S2000. It's that's not what it is, and that's not what it's competing against. But if you're gonna get the four banger Eclipse and you're gonna compare it to like a Honda Civic. Now we can talk. Now we can now talk. That's a, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah. Now we can talk. So it, it's just knowing what you're getting in the class that it's in, you'll be happy. Right. Now, if you go and you try to compare this to like, oh, you know, it's not like the, I don't know, uh, 350Z. The 350Z <laughs> or, you know, uh, S2000. If you, as long as you know that, then it's fine. I think it's a good platform to build out, especially with what you're doing, converting it to all wheel drive, throwing the turbo. You're gonna have something that's super unique and then you're gonna have something that's powerful and something that people just don't see every day. But if I were to say one thing about this car to someone that's, that's in the market for a car, maybe they're a teenager, maybe they're a first time buyer, maybe they just don't wanna be in debt and they want something that's cool and fun, I think the Eclipse fits that really well.